Imagine the scene, Rome, 44 BC, Julius Caesar lies lifeless on the Senate floor, a victim of betrayal and conspiracy. On the Ides of March, the 15th day, in a setting of treachery, the revered Julius Caesar fell. His assassination marked a turning point in the annals of Rome, a seismic event that would forever alter its course. A coalition of senators led by Brutus, Cassius and several others had conspired to end Caesar's life. Their motive? Fear. Fear of a monarch ruling Rome, fear that the republic they held so dear was slipping through their fingers. But let's not forget, Julius Caesar was no ordinary man. He was a military genius, a charismatic leader and a shrewd politician. His conquest of Gaul, his victory in the Civil War, his rise to absolute power, all testament to his extraordinary capabilities. He had the love of the people, the loyalty of his soldiers, and the fear of his enemies. He was the very embodiment of Roman ambition and power, yet his ambition proved to be his downfall. The senators, who saw in him a threat to their privileges and the Republic, turned into his assassins. They struck him 23 times, and with each stab, a bit of Rome's old order died. The last words he allegedly said, a too brute, echo through history, a poignant reminder of betrayal and lost friendship. In the aftermath of Caesar's assassination, Rome plunged into chaos. The power vacuum left behind gave rise to a fierce power struggle, a period of political turmoil that saw alliances formed and broken, wars waged, and a republic teetering on the brink of collapse. Yet from this chaos, a new order emerged, the stage was set for a transformation, a metamorphosis, if you will. Julius Caesar, even in death, was shaping the future of Rome. With Caesar's fall, a power vacuum was created, paving the way for the rise of a new Rome, the Roman Empire. From the ashes of the Roman Republic, the Roman Empire rose, heralding a new era of power and glory. After the fall of Julius Caesar, Rome was in chaos. It was a time of uncertainty, but also a time of opportunity. A new chapter in the history of Rome was about to unfold. As the Republic crumbled, a power vacuum emerged. The man who would fill this void was none other than Augustus Caesar, the adopted son of Julius Caesar. He was a shrewd and ambitious leader, adept at navigating the complex political landscape of Rome. Augustus seized power and brought an end to the civil wars that had plagued the Republic, marking the transition to the Roman Empire. Augustus Caesar reigned supreme, becoming Rome's first emperor. Under his rule, Rome flourished. He introduced a series of reforms that stabilized the empire, restructured the military, and revitalized the economy. These measures, coupled with his diplomatic prowess, laid the groundwork for a period of peace and prosperity known as the Pax Romana, or Roman peace. The Pax Romana was a golden age for the Roman Empire. Lasting for over two centuries, it was a time of relative tranquility and expansion. The empire's boundaries stretched from the Atlantic Ocean to the Euphrates River, encompassing a vast variety of cultures, languages and peoples. The Roman legions marched forth, their banners waving high, extending the reach of Roman law, culture and civilization. The Roman Empire was more than just a political entity. It was a beacon of power and civilization. Its influence permeated every aspect of life, from architecture and literature to science and philosophy. Roman roads and aqueducts crisscrossed the empire, testament to Rome's ingenuity and ambition. Yet the Roman Empire was not without its challenges. Internal strife, economic instability and external threats would test the mettle of the empire. But these are stories for another time. The Roman Empire at its height was a beacon of power and civilization, unmatched in its time. Its legacy continues to echo through the annals of history, a testament to Rome's indomitable spirit and enduring influence. Rome flourished under the rule of capable emperors, its influence spreading across the known world. This was the period known as the Pax Romana, or Roman peace, a time of relative tranquility and stability that lasted for over two centuries. The accomplishments during this era were monumental, reflecting the empire's vast wealth and sophisticated culture. Rome's architectural prowess was undeniably one of its most enduring legacies. Magnificent structures like the Colosseum, the Pantheon and the intricate network of aqueducts stand as testament to the Romans' remarkable engineering skills. 
These architectural wonders were not just symbols of grandeur, but also of practicality and innovation, serving the needs of a burgeoning urban population. But Rome's advancements weren't limited to stone and mortar. The empire's legal system was another of its crowning achievements. Roman law laid the groundwork for many modern legal systems, with concepts like innocent until proven guilty and the right to a fair trial, originating in the courts of ancient Rome. These principles, revolutionary in their time, showcased the Romans' ability to create a system that was both just and pragmatic. The cultural life of Rome was no less vibrant, with literature, philosophy and art flourishing under the empire's patronage. The works of Virgil, Ovid and Horace, among others, continue to be celebrated today, their words echoing through the centuries. The Romans' appetite for spectacle was also insatiable, as evidenced by their grand amphitheatres and the legendary gladiatorial games. Yet the golden age of Rome was not without its shadows. The wealth and prosperity were unevenly distributed, with the rich enjoying the spoils while the poor often lived in squalor. Furthermore, the peace was maintained through brutal military force and the subjugation of conquered peoples. The Golden Age of Rome was a time of great prosperity, but like all good things, it had to come to an end. As we'll see in the next scene, the seeds of decline were already being sown, even at the height of Rome's glory. As the saying goes, Rome wasn't built in a day, but its decline was a slow, drawn-out process that spanned centuries. The first signs of Rome's decline were subtle, almost imperceptible, but they gradually began to eat away at the very fabric of the empire. Let's delve into the key factors that contributed to this decline. Political instability was a major issue. The Roman Empire, once a beacon of stability, began to experience frequent changes in leadership. In the space of just 50 years, Rome had more than 20 emperors. These rapid changes created a state of constant uncertainty and weakened the empire's central authority. Economic problems also played a significant role. The vast empire was expensive to maintain. To fund the military, the government heavily taxed the citizens. However, as the empire expanded, it became more challenging to control trade and collect taxes effectively. This resulted in a dwindling treasury, which in turn led to the devaluation of the Roman currency. The economic stability that Rome was once known for was no more. The military, which had been the backbone of the empire, started to crumble. The Roman legions, once the pride of the empire, became overstretched, guarding the extensive borders from numerous enemies. The military was also plagued by internal issues, with soldiers often showing more loyalty to their generals than to Rome itself. At the heart of these problems was weak and corrupt leadership. Many emperors used their position for personal gain, neglecting the needs of the empire. They were often more interested in lavish lifestyles than in effective governance. This lack of strong leadership accelerated Rome's decline, so we see that Rome's decline was not a sudden event, but a gradual process. It was the product of a complex web of issues, including political instability, economic troubles, military problems and, importantly, weak and corrupt leadership. The once mighty empire was crumbling, its glory fading into the annals of history. In 476 AD, a once unthinkable event occurred. Rome fell. The last Roman Emperor, Romulus Augustus, was dethroned. This was not a sudden event, but rather the culmination of a series of pressures and problems that had been building for centuries. The fall of Rome was not just the result of one cataclysmic event. It was a slow process, a gradual descent into chaos and decay, hastened by external pressures and internal turmoil. From the outside, Rome was under constant threat. The Germanic tribes, once considered mere barbarians on the fringe of the empire, had grown in power and ambition. They took advantage of Rome's weakening state to launch invasions, pillaging and burning as they advanced. The city, once invincible, could not withstand these relentless attacks. But the fall of Rome wasn't just due to external pressures. The empire was rotting from within. Corruption was rampant and the once strong Roman military was a shadow of its former self. The political system had become unstable, with emperors rising and falling at an alarming rate. The economy was in shambles, and the once proud and prosperous Roman citizens were left in poverty. 
A combination of these external invasions and internal decay led to the eventual fall of Rome. The once great empire, which had lasted for over a thousand years, was reduced to a smouldering ruin. The fall of Rome was not just the end of an empire, but the end of an era. It marked a shift in the world order, a change in power dynamics that would shape the course of history. But even as Rome fell, its legacy endured. The Roman Empire may have ended, but its influence continued to be felt in the centuries that followed. The fall of Rome marked the end of an era, but the legacy of the Roman Empire lives on. Its laws, its culture, its technology and its ideas continue to shape our world today. The fall of Rome wasn't just the end of an empire, it was the beginning of a legacy that continues to resonate through the ages. Though Rome fell, its influence did not die. It lives on in our modern society in countless ways. Indeed, Rome's legacy is as vast as the empire itself once was, with its impact felt in numerous aspects of life, from law and language to architecture and government. In the realm of law, Rome's legacy is profound. The Roman legal system, with its emphasis on written statutes, principles of justice and citizen rights, laid the groundwork for much of Western law. Concepts such as innocent until proven guilty and the right to a fair trial are deeply rooted in Roman legal tradition. Language too bears the indelible mark of Rome. Latin, the language of the Romans, is the mother tongue of the Romance languages, which include Italian, French, Spanish, Portuguese and Romanian. Moreover, a significant portion of the English language, about 60%, is derived from Latin, testament to the enduring influence of Rome. In the sphere of architecture, Rome's legacy is monumental, both figuratively and literally. From the iconic Roman arch and dome to the use of concrete, Roman architectural principles and techniques have been replicated and adapted throughout the centuries. The Roman penchant for grand public structures, amphitheatres, baths, aqueducts has also greatly influenced urban planning and public architecture. Finally, in the realm of governance, Rome bequeathed the world the concept of republicanism, a form of government where power resides in elected individuals representing the citizen body. Many modern democratic systems, including that of the United States, owe a debt to the Roman idea of representative government. Rome's legacy is indeed far-reaching. It is a testament to the enduring influence of a civilization that, even in its downfall, shaped the course of human history. Rome may have fallen, but its spirit, its legacy, continues to shape the world we live in today. Ah, the story of Rome is a tale of rise and fall, of glory and decay. It's a story that continues to captivate us millennia later. The echoes of Rome's grandeur and its eventual demise reverberate through the ages, serving as a poignant reminder of the cyclical nature of civilizations. What lessons, then, can we glean from Rome's rich tapestry of history? At its zenith, Rome was a beacon of innovation, culture and power. Its influence spanned continents, its legions were unmatched, and its citizens enjoyed a level of prosperity that was the envy of the known world. Yet Rome also bore witness to the corrosive effects of corruption, complacency and unchecked ambition. Its decline was not the result of a single event, but a gradual erosion of the principles and values that once made it great. This narrative has a profound relevance to our modern world. Rome's rise was fueled by its commitment to the common good, its respect for the rule of law and its investment in public works and infrastructure. Its fall, on the other hand, was precipitated by a disregard for these very principles. As such, Rome serves as a cautionary tale, a testament to the importance of maintaining societal values and institutions. Yet, Rome's story is not just one of doom and gloom. It's also a story of resilience, of rebirth. In the ashes of the Western Roman Empire, the seeds of the Renaissance were sown. The legacy of Rome in art, architecture, law and language continues to shape our world in countless ways. The tale of Rome is a mirror in which we can reflect on our own societies, our own values. It's a reminder that greatness is not a given, but something that must be nurtured and protected. And it's a call to action, to learn from the past, to build a better future. As we look back on the story of Rome, we are reminded of the timeless nature of history and the lessons it holds for us all.